Yeah. Who is that DJ like that? All right, all right, all right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you to my cousin, DJ Ryan Wolf, for playing me in right quick. That's who's DJing like that. If you guys want to get hip to my man, go to his Instagram. That's DJ Ryan Wolf, the hottest DJ in Cleveland. Well, welcome, everybody. I am Lockout Men. I am the host of Lockout Men Podcast Show. Welcome, welcome. I do have a podcast interview for you guys today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This gentleman right here comes uh, comes to me. He wants to sit down and have a, have a chat with us, you know, to let me know about what's going on and everything. And I'm like, yeah, I'm right here. We ready. We about to do it. He's chilling. I'm chilling. And we about to get it in. 31 years old, uh, he's born, he's raised in D.C., Maryland, and Virginia. Can't see how you could be raised in three different areas, bro. <laughs> he, 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 got in, he got into trucking after, uh, after getting fired from uh, retail security. And now he's driving teams for U.S. Express. He's been rocking out with the company for a year. And uh, and yeah, we about to get into it with him. I like to bring to the stage. Give me a second. I like to bring to the stage, Mr. Eric Washington, to the show. Thank you, thank you, brother. All right, thank all you right. Me. You very welcome, sir. Thanks for coming on. I really do appreciate it, man. Sit down and uh, chop it up Let's with me. You know, feel like uh feel like late night with with letterman <laughs> or some shit like that you know what i'm saying uh Letter- I, like, I just want to say on the air man it's an honor to be on your show like i told you earlier it's surreal just to talk to you i watch your videos i watch listen to your podcast all the time that could be on the show for real it's like i appreciate um, it man appreciate thank it. you how, how long you been uh how, how long you been rocking out with me man um, I've been out here for a year, OTR, probably the whole year. Um, what really got me, like, really involved on your show was to, to make the call video. Because, like, um, you know, I've been actually trying to look for another company at the moment. And I, I rocked out here for a year, so mm-hmm. I, that's what really got, got me, like, really on to make the call video. They've really been a help. So I really appreciate you doing that for the community because it really helped me out a lot. It helped me out a lot. I I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it, and it it, it feels good to hear uh hear other drivers getting something out of that, you know. Because like I said, you know, the feedback the feedback for the make the call videos has been up and down, and it has been mixed. But for for mm-hmm. the true people that really that really got something out of that, um, thank you, thank you very much for that, man. So, um, yeah. so brother, man, you D.C., Washington D.C., Maryland, uh-huh. and Virginia, man, all, all <laughs> three, all three areas. So take take me back to 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 where you initially grew up at to where you at now. All right. So when I say D.M.V. or D.C., Maryland, Virginia, basically, that's D.M.V. Obviously stands. For well, it really stands for Department of Motor Vehicles, but that's a whole different story. <laughs> but um, but the DMV is just an acronym for DC, Maryland, Virginia, um, or in other words, the Washington DC metropolitan area. Mm-hmm. So when you look at um, most cities, well, all cities in America, you know, you got the inner city, and then you got the suburb, the suburbs around it, right? Right. So you got like you just think of the counties that surround it. That's part of that metropolitan area. But Washington DC is a district. It doesn't sit in a state. It sits on its own. So when you think of the suburbs around it, there's the surrounding suburbs of Mer- uh, Southern Maryland and Northern Virginia. So that's where you get the term DMV from because Washington, D.C. doesn't have its own suburbs like any other city. 
its suburbs are it's in the surrounding counties of Maryland and Virginia. So those are the two states that surround it. So I'm from that area. I was born and raised in PG County, Maryland, which is actually the same county. I, we did a story about this gentleman, but uh, remember the dude that played for the uh, Cleveland Cavaliers? And there was a video that went viral. Oh, yeah, him. Delonte West. Um, yeah, yeah, he's from that same county. He's from, he's from the same county, uh, Prince George's County, Maryland, which is literally borderline Washington, D.C. You know it's, so, it's a damn Kevin shame. Kevin Durant's from the same county. It's a damn shame what, what happened to that guy, man. Yeah, I man, mean, that, he that was, story was real sad. I mean, he was he was real he sad. was the he was the truth when he when he played yeah. for uh when he played for Cleveland during during the uh LeBron years or the LeBron era. You know, yeah, I, I I just yeah. think that everybody in that era when LeBron was was playing for the city, everybody was good. I mean, Boo, the, the, mm-hmm. the, what was that kid named? Booby or whatever his name was. I forget, but they called yeah, him Booby. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember Booby or something like that. But I, I forgot his name, but I know you're talking about. Yeah. Now, he, he made her, and even the, what was that little, what was that little, uh, that white guard that played uh, backup for uh, uh, <sighs> Kyrie. I forget. And, um, I, I forget. Went, I forget his name too good. because he was right. They made you know yeah. LeBron. I, I don't get it. I. It's just that when LeBron was there. Now look, look, guys. I look. I I, I am a LeBron fan. All right. <laughs> I, I am a LeBron fan, but I'm just I'm just spitting. I'm I'm spitting truth here, because when LeBron was really yeah. with the Cleveland Cavaliers. He damn near made everybody there good, including the coach. Now I forgot. I, I forgot. Mm-hmm. I, I forgot the coach name too. It, it's a damn shame that I forgot majority of these players' name except for LeBron. <laughs> but uh, but uh, but the coach was good when LeBron was there, and then when LeBron left, you know, he kind of went downhill. He left. And he really tried to show something. I believe he played. I mean, I believe he coached the Lakers for a while. And it really showed that he really wasn't a good coach. <laughs> he really yeah, wasn't. LeBron is the truth, man. A lot of people give him flack, but you know, that's a whole other topic. I can go on about LeBron. I, I'm a I, LeBron fan. You know what? I you, you know, know what? He I he he went to you over know he went to Los Angeles. Sorely because of you know what was what was available out there. I I really don't think, mm-hmm. and this is and this is my opinion, but I really don't think he went out there sorely just to play for the Lakers. All right, I mean, he, yeah. you know, the opportunity was there. The opportunity that the Lakers gave him all that money to come over and play, but really, th- there was underlying reasons why he really went to Los Angeles. You know, he started he got a film he got a film production company out there now. Uh he got his his commercials and all like that. So there's there's an underlying reason why he, you know, took the offer with Los Angeles. But uh of course Yeah, it's, it's better for his family, his kids, mm-hmm. you know, better opportunity for his kids and stuff. So I get it. Like yeah. I ain't mad at it. All right, man. So, uh, but yeah, man. So that's that's where I'm from. That's where I'm from. That's the same uh, area where Kevin Durant is from. Mm-hmm. Actually, a lot of ball players come out of, the, out of that area. Um, that area, Michael Beasley. Um, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, that's what DMV stands for, the Washington D.C. Metropolitan. Well, what Have about wait, 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 wait? What about Eric Williams, though? Eric Williams? What? What? what how? How come you couldn't come out as a basketball player? What? What? What happened? I don't know where Eric Williams is, but but yeah, you. I mean Eric Washington. Um. My fault. <laughs> My bad. See, I be butchering people's names <laughs> like crazy, man. So you gotta excuse Look, me for that. Hey. <laughs> yeah, my man say, yeah, I don't okay, know who Eric man. Williams is. Who the fuck is Eric Williams? No, Eric <laughs> Eric Washington. What what happened to Eric Washington coming up out of there as a basketball player, man? What what what, what happened? Nah, man, that's just you know, there's too much competition, man. It's Competition, yeah. too much competition. As a matter of fact, if you got some free time, I'm just gonna plug this in because I, I I done watched it like a million times already. Mm-hmm. Kevin Durant just put out a, a a a documentary on Showtime. He got Showtime, 
get it, if you don't get it, it's a seven-day free trial. It's called Basketball County in the Water. And it talks about uh, all the players that came out of my, that my area, mm-hmm. D.C. County area, Washington, D.C. area. Okay. It's so many. You'd be surprised. Wow. So it's a really good documentary. I enjoyed it because that's where I'm from. I paid, I, I'm very proud of where I come from. Oh, okay. So, so how was it? But, you know, but yeah, man, my whole family's from that area. My my father and mother born and raised in D.C. They moved out to Maryland, raised me and my, my, my sisters. I got family in Northern Virginia as well. So it's like we, we, that whole area, man, that's, 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 that's my heart and soul right there. You say so. that's your stomping ground. So how was it, how was it coming up, man? Yeah. What, what, what was life like for you coming up, man? Coming up was good. Well, you know, I was born, you know, I grew up in Maryland right outside of D.C., like 15 minutes outside of D.C. And at the time, that's when D.C. was going through that crack epidemic. You know what I'm saying? I was born in 1989, so the 80s and the late 90s were real bad on crack uh, crack cocaine um, in that era. In that era. So it was, D.C. was really bad. You know, it was called, it was the murder capital at one point. So, like, my parents moved out of Maryland and raised me and, my, you know, my sisters. I got two younger sisters. And um, so, you know, life wasn't hard, you know what I'm saying? It came with its own, you know, struggles sometimes, life not being on sometimes, mm-hmm. you know, the water not being paid on time. But, you know, little stuff like that, nothing too crazy. Um, Yeah, nothing too crazy, man. It, 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 was, it was definitely, you know, I feel like I got a good balance of, you know, the hardship as well as, you know, life lessons and all that stuff so yeah it wasn't bad at all so uh it wasn't bad at all so so what 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 got you interested in trucking ah that's a good question man um so what got me interested in trucking was um i've been interested probably like the last three four years you know i got a, my, my man he he lived in Boston, from baltimore and um you know he's he been driving trucks for like five years now and so he's been telling me about it, but like you know, it's one of them things you don't know nothing about it. You were, you know, you were in the career that you're doing before, so you know, you you just, you know, you didn't, you're not ready to make that jump right away. Mm-hmm. You don't really know what you're getting into. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's a big commitment to just drop what you're doing and just start something totally new. You know what I'm saying? So I never made that jump, but then after doing retail security for like seven, eight years. You know, missing out on promotions, getting fired from one job to the other. I just got fed up with it. I got fed up with time working with people, working paycheck to paycheck, getting paid every two weeks. You know what I'm saying? Struggling. And I just like, you know what? This is it. Like, I'm ready to do something different. And, you know, he was the one that got me into trucking. Because, like, my area where I'm from, you don't see a lot of truck drivers come from my area. You know what I'm saying? There's not even no truck stops to do. So it's like, I didn't know nothing about trucks. I didn't know nothing about I didn't even know what a truck stop was until I got to school for trucking. Like I was like, so how do truck drivers take showers? Oh, they <laughs> checking my truck stop. What a truck? What's a truck stop? You know what I'm saying? Like, like there's no truck stops in the DMV area. So like I had no idea. This was all new to me. And you know he was the one that got me interested, told me about the kind of money I can make and all that stuff. So and at that point I just lost my job. I was all for it. I, you know I'm single, I ain't got kids. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I had nothing to lose. So about a year ago in June, I made that decision, went to school, and I went with U.S. Express only because the dude that told me about it, he was actually a trainer for U.S. Express. And, you know, you know, prior to me getting into trucking, he was the one um, um, that kind of got me interested. So I went on YouTube and, you know, like everybody else, started looking at videos and all that. And one of the biggest things that I noticed was people talking about hor- horrifying experiences with trainers. You know what I'm saying? Just getting bad trainers and all that other stuff. So when my, you know, when he told me that he was a trainer, I just automatically went there because I'm like, look, I'm going to be on the truck with somebody I know, somebody that's going to have my back. You know what I'm saying? So I'd rather do it that way. So I went to U.S. Express, went through their little school that they fund, and all got right. my CDOs that way. All and right. then let's, a few days later, I hopped in my training let's, truck. Let's, let's back up a little bit. Let's, let's back up a little bit. So you was in... um. You was in retail security for uh for how many years? Like seven, eight years. Seven, eight years. Was it with what well, you said obviously yeah. it wasn't with the same company, so you, you pretty much bounced from company to company. Did you go and get are are you a certif- certified uh certified security officer or are you or you just work with security firms that that didn't require that? 
So basically, like the retail security, um, like you know, like the big stores like Target, Walmart, mm-hmm. and stuff like that, mm-hmm. it's basically like loss prevention. So oh, okay. you know, your job is to you know apprehend shoplifters. But that was my job. I was the guy that walked around the store, didn't wear no uniform. I dressed like everybody else, but I'm actually watching, you know, stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? And you know, apprehend people that shoplift. That was that, that was my job. Now let me ask and, you this. You know, Not- I did it for. Now let me ask you this: What was was Walmart was one of the places? What, what was the what was the big places that you worked at for the longest? Uh, I worked at three different retailers. I worked at uh, Target for about five years. Mm-hmm. I worked at uh, this company called Lord and Taylor, which I don't even know if they're still in business now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I worked there for about two years, and then I did my last extent at Sephora, which is like a high end makeup store. Okay, so, so let's let's let's. And then uh, that was the last company I worked at. Let's let's talk about Target since you've been there for the, since you've been there for the longest. Um, being mm-hmm. being a. a a retail security officer or loss prevention. Let me now don't, don't give me the, don't, don't take this the wrong way and don't think that I'm coming after you because. Oh, I, no, I, trust me. I'm not, I kind of, I already know where it's going, but I, I, I'm not. I, I'm I not, I'm feel, I, you know, I, I had my run-ins with a, with a Walmart security or with a Walmart, mm-hmm. uh, loss prevention officer that damn near followed me throughout the whole damn store yo are you guys are are you guys taught to to how can i say this without sounding crazy but are you guys taught to like nah, man, just go ahead. Are, are you guys taught to like profile a person when they come through the when they come through the door so here's the thing. Just like in like you can say in any type of security law law enforcement mm-hmm. job, you know, you're gonna have people who are good at their job and you're gonna have people who are just bad at their job, assholes, whatever you wanna call them. Mm-hmm. Um and no, we're not taught to profile. We're taught um we're trained to pick up on behaviors as well as um monitor, you know, high end merchandise, merchandise that gets you know, taking the most. So, you know, we watch those items as well as we pick up on behavior. Mm-hmm. Now, of course, you get those guys that get in, or girls that get in there, and, you know what I'm saying? They they profile, they, you know, you know, all types of crookedness, you know what I'm saying? So there is that. And, and that's one of the things I didn't like about that job because, you know, you come across those people and it makes you look bad, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Even though you might do your job. I did my job to the highest the highest you know, performance that I could do, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, you know, so, it no, we don't get trained to do that. You know, just like any other job, you get the right way, you know, they, they teach you different behaviors. Like, for example, you know, one of the things I look at, you know, when I used to do that job, you know, I look at, you know, behaviors. So, like, if you go into the store and you just start picking up item after item after item, you're not looking at the price, you're not analyzing or you might pick up five of the same thing, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Five, uh, five uh, Beats by Dre speakers or headphones, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like who normally picks up five of them and then just goes and pays for them, you know what I'm saying? Now, not saying that that can't happen, but that's a behavior I would pick up and just watch, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Um, but then you got people that would just watch somebody because, you know, they're black and got a hoodie on. You know, and they'll just watch them, but that's not how that's not how you talk. That's not how you supposed to do it. Who? So, like, you know, if I got somebody walking around, we're looking up at cameras while they walk around the store. That's that's stuff like that that just throws that's different. Okay. You know, that's that's what I pick up. So, so I, I doing the doing your time there, like you know, doing your time there because I'm 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 trying to understand. Like, do you guys? You guys don't have the power of detainment, or do y'all? Uh, so, well, one is different by state. So, depending on the state you are, it's different. And then, um, so basically, what it's called is called um, a civil arrest. Okay. So, a lot of these companies are privately owned. Right. So, if we physically see you taking merchandise and not paying for it, and you walk out the store, we can do a civil arrest, which is detaining you and bringing to the, and hold you until, you know, law enforcement is present. You know, that that we have the right to. Now, 
as far as a, like physical abuse, where I think guys slam people, beat up on people, all that stuff, that's when you draw the line and lawyers can get involved, all that other stuff. So like a lot of times, you know, we can we can we can get physical with people, but we couldn't like assault people. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like I can hold you, detain you. We even get handcuffed, but like there was a gray line too because if I'm slamming you down and you know if I hurt you or break break something, then then that's when it that's when the it's line gets crossed. You know what I'm right there. A lot of times we're told to just disengage. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes it's just a ain't ain't ain't, ain't it better to just let them. And in order to avoid physical confrontation, ain't it just better just to let them go? Yep, that, and that, that's what I was going to say. A lot of companies have gone to that uh, that that part now where they just disengage. You know what I'm saying? So if you do get physically involved, they disengage. You just call the police, and let them handle. Okay. So that's where it's going to. But old school LP. Oh, yeah, I, I, yeah. Back in the day, yeah. Back in the day, the they they they, they came out. Yeah, back in the day, <laughs> back in the day, they, yeah. They they yeah. grab you by the arm, physically abuse you, and all like that, and they uh-huh. didn't have no no rhyme or reason. But now, you know, now when people when when people do some ill shit, they can get a lawyer and make <laughs> make them to be mm-hmm. the victim instead of the company. And most of it's recorded now, you know. More stuff is recorded. More people got cell phones nowadays, so mm-hmm. that's why a lot of that, is, you know, is declining now. So, you know, everything's recorded. You know, you're 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 more likely to be on somebody's YouTube or Facebook page real quick now than back in the day. So, so, so be honest, bro. Yeah. Be be honest, bro. In your in your in your seven or eight year uh, retail uh, security, who steals the most? Is it is it is it, is it is it blacks uh, or is it the whites or is it even? I'm I'm gonna I'm keep it a buck with you, man. You my man. Everybody still, <laughs> everybody still, and I, I'm not even trying to be funny. Everybody still, because this is the way you gotta look at it. When I worked at Target, I was in a predominantly black neighborhood, mm-hmm. so obviously most of my cases were African American, right? But when I worked at Lord and Taylor, it was in predominantly white neighborhood. You know, high end rich people. And all those people stole it. I mean, these people will drop three thousand, four thousand dollars in one day and still will shoplift. You know, and I was shocked. That was a culture shock for me because, you know, you just think that they didn't, but man, everybody still. So you just can't count on nobody. That's why you gotta watch behaviors, you gotta watch certain patterns because when you start putting categorizing shoplifters in a group of ethnicity, you're gonna miss out. Oh, okay. You're gonna miss out. That's what's everybody still. And I and I feel like if you give somebody the opportunity, they'll take it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that's, like that, and that's what every that's what everybody insane. you give you give somebody a little bit of rope. Yeah. Of course they're gonna take it. You know, you yep. leave you know, you got some yep. honest so, people you got some honest people out there and then you got some you you got some honest people with some devious ways out there, and then you got the the devious people. Yeah, you know. So of course, if you leave, yeah, like no, everybody does it. Of course, if you, of course, if you leave, uh, if you leave like, I don't know, if you leave like a ten dollar bill on the ground, some people gonna walk past it, some people gonna pick it up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Some mm-hmm. people probably that's, might that's turn it true. in. And then some people might keep it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So if you give somebody that rope, somebody you're going to at least pull on it, you know. All right, so. And and, and honestly, mm-hmm. like, oh, man, I've had times where I've brought people in the office and, you know, I interview them and I ask them, you know, what made them take whatever they took. And a lot of the times people come in the store and they didn't have no intentions of shopping that day. It came in the store because they were bored. It came in the store because they were trying to get something else and they just saw something and wanted it and they took it you know so a lot of people like i said it's sometimes it's just the opportunity so i mean everybody still it ain't no, no such thing if you got two hands <laughs> you're capable of stealing <laughs> was you it know, so, in target man different. i mean you know with all the cameras with all the cameras and everything that's in target was uh was this still you know was it still easy in your opinion, to go up in there and, and, and shoplift? In my opinion, it's easy to steal from them kind of stores. Um, and that's only because it's so big, you know. 
you, you think about it. You got cameras in all angles and everything. Mm-hmm. Nine times out of ten, but it's so easy to steal because of the fact that you just can't watch everybody. You know, it's so many people in the store, so many things going on at once, so many transactions, so many, you know, things being moved around. It's just, it's just impossible to watch everybody. So it's easy to steal. Now, you know, as far as getting caught, you know, if you get caught, you know, that's on you because of the fact that, I mean, the cameras are there, the resources are there. If you get caught, it's just a matter of who's watching. Oh, okay. You know, okay. so if you've ever, if anybody's ever stole anything from any of those kind of stores, it's not because, I mean, it is because it's easy, but at the same time, you just probably wasn't being watched. They probably was watching something else going on in the store that was way more concerning to their, to their needs than whatever you was taking. You know what I'm saying? And you just got to pick your poison. I've had times where there's three cases going on at once, and I literally have to drop two of them and just pay attention to one because I'm only one person. You know? yeah. I got to just pay attention to whatever this case is over here, and the other two just get away with God knows what. You know? I got so, you. I got you. It just is what it is. All right. So you got so you got into trucking after you know after you feel that uh you know retail wasn't wasn't it anymore. Um, how did your family feel about you getting the uh, get into trucking? You said you're single. So how how did you how did you bring that to your moms or pops or something like that? Well, um, you know I. You know, I was doing all right for myself. I had my own apartment, had a car, all that good stuff. And, you know, when I got fired from my job, I just automatically said, you know what? I'm going to do this trucking thing. So I made this plan that, you know, I'm going to get rid of all my expenses, all my bills, um, get rid of my car. I got rid of my place. I told my mother that, uh, you know, I got this plan. I told her my plan. I told her, I asked if it was okay if I could stay with her until I could, you know, get myself back on my feet. And she was like, all right, that's fine. Like, and when I told her, you know, that I'm going to, you know, trucking school, get my CDL, she automatically said, oh, I can see you doing that. Okay. And, you know, she, she automatically saw it, so she could see me doing that. So it was excited. And I ain't gonna lie to you, um, knockout man. Mm-hmm. Like, I've been doing this for a year now. I've never not once heard my, my folks say as many times as they said that they're proud of me. Like, I hear all the time and not that they don't ever say it but it's just like now it's just like i don't know some type of prestige that trucking has gave me like i hear it so many times now and it makes me feel good because you know I, I wasn't feeling that way during my last career you know even though i did like it at the time i was getting burnt out doing it but like now i, I have 100 percent support now so like everybody's with me on this, so I I love it. I'm glad I did. I should have been doing it. You know that's that's how it is. That, that that's so. how it is with everybody. Once they get into it, they like, damn, why didn't I? Why why didn't I get into it back in the 80s, back in the 90s, back in the early 2000s? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's how it was for mm-hmm. me, man. I mean, I, I I'm in it now for five years deep, but I I've been wanted to get into the I I've been wanted to get into the game since the 90s, man. Like seriously but uh but you know it took me all the way up until you know situations life situations and you know then 2015 happened and that's when i got into it all right so you you decided to go to u.s express but the schooling you went to was was u.s express approved did they pay for the did they pay for your license did you go through the you know go through the uh go through their program or or what was the way that you went to go and get your your cdls so uh yeah i went through their program um how it worked was they pay for your greyhound bus ticket lord have mercy greyhound and um they sent me to this school called mcc out of uh hazelwood missouri and i went out there and you know you do the whole Three week, four week program. They house you. Your express pays for your housing. They don't pay for your food. They pay for your housing, and they pay for you to get your learner permit, you know, your CDL permit, as well as you know your uh, your CDL. They pay for all of that. Um, and then once you get your CDL, you go through orientation, which is about three days, and boom, you know, after, right after that, you hop on your trainer's truck. So within a month, I was able to get my CDL through them. So and I didn't pay for nothing. Now. They they sell it that they that they pay for, it, but how what they really do is this is how they get you. What they really do is 
when you get to school, the very first day, they 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 explain everything, and you know before they have they sign it. And what they do is they open up a loan in your name to Liberty Finance, and the loan is in your name, not in your express name, it's in your name. Mm-hmm. And that's how they pay for your school, and they pay for your school to loan. Now the agreement is that you stay working for U.S. Express for the year, and what they do is they take out fifty dollars out of your check each week, which adds up to about two hundred dollars a month. Mm-hmm. And by the end of the year, which would be about twenty six hundred, um, I believe it's twenty six hundred. Uh, they pay, they use that money that they pay out of your check to pay towards your loan. Okay. And they match it every single month. So every single month, they take out you. You pay a hundred. I mean, two hundred dollars out of your out of your check for the they month. They pay two hundred, and then they'll match it. So by the end of the year, you done paid twenty six hundred towards it, and they paid the other twenty six hundred. So you're like, well, dang. You know, they don't really pay for your school. They pay for only half of it. Right. So what they also do is to try to get you to stay another year. Once that year is up, then say, you'll okay, get that money back. Now, well, we're going to go ahead and pay you that money back. Yeah. So, but that's if you decide to stay with them after. So, you know and, and so after in actuality, so, so, so in actuality, it's, it's the contract theoretically is for two years, pretty much. It's yeah, not. It's much. not for a year yeah. like they like they state. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And, and it's not really a contract because you you're free to leave at any time. It's just if you leave, then the loan is since the loan is in your name, it's under your responsibility, and they won't be putting money towards it no more because you left. Okay. So, yeah. well, okay. I, I see what that, you're saying. Instead of, of that were, instead of they, it's like you said they took the loan out in your name so that they won't have. That yep. responsibility, I got you, okay. Exactly. And I think but a lot of companies is going that saying, way. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. okay. So that's what they get you, and, and you know, and you know, I, the only reason why you know, because I had people, I, everybody that I know that I went to school with has left New York Express, you know, and they went somewhere else, <laughs> and they said, "Screw it, I'm gonna go somewhere else, and I'm gonna just pay this loan off myself." Let me ask you this question. Let, let me let me ask you this question. Why? Why do you think they 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 left U.S. Express? What was what was some of the reasons you think that they left U.S. Express? Is it because they they wasn't told the full story? Uh, was it because of the miles? What what do you think is the reason why a lot of people leave U.S. Express? I think it's a lot of the reasons you just said, but um, from what I've experienced, you know, it's you know they're not told what they. Told that, you know, they wasn't told the truth about something or the pay isn't what they thought it was going to be. Um, uh, it could be, uh, you know, it could be a lot of things. Um, I know a lot of people that I know left found just jobs that just paid more money, you know. I think U.S. Express, don't quote me because I've never been solo before, but I think they was paying that guy starting off like thirty four cents a mile, yeah, something like that. Yeah, I, I so started. Yeah, I started. The road. At, I started at thirty four cents a mile when I started with U.S. Express. Yeah, you got people that's over the road making thirty four cents a mile. So a lot of people wasn't happy with that, you know. And they they was finding companies within three years. I mean, not three years, three months. That that was paying more. more just for having three months experience. So they'll leave. So and they just said, screw it. I just paid this loan off myself. And I can, you know, those people, you know, they. I just, I'm just one of them guys that stay loyal to whatever commitment I made. And honestly, teaming here was the best decision I ever made because I've made really good money teaming. And I got lucky um, with finding the partner I did because me and him met at school. And we didn't know each other prior, but how we met was because we're from the same area. He's from D.C. Mm-hmm. So when I met him in school, we just clicked instantly. And... We just said, hey, let's team. Like, make more money teaming. You know what I'm saying? When we go home, we go home to the same area. So I gotta, home time is not a problem. I got to admit. I, I I do got to admit one thing. U.S. Express solo sucks, but they teaming. I, I just got finished doing a video on a young lady that just recently got fired for uh for whatever re- I mean, for the reason she got fired. But I agree with her. Teaming is where the money at with U.S. Express. I don't understand why, mm-hmm. but I do now. Back then, I didn't understand it because they was trying to push me into teaming. And I was like, nah, 
At first, I thought about it. I was like, yeah, okay, but nah, I'm, I'm, I'm not a people person. So I, I you know, I, the person that that yeah. I'm teaming with, we both got to be on the same page. We got to be compatible, and we got to have the same grind mode. And I, I just felt that it wasn't nobody at that particular time had that. You know what I'm saying? I talked to one guy that mm-hmm. they tried to team me up with, but he was like, well, I, I want to go home every other week. And at that time, I was like, no, nah, I, I want to get my year out. I want to grind it out. I want to, you know, be out here. You know what I'm saying? So it didn't work. It mm-hmm. didn't work. But it's it's working for you now. You, you're you teaming. So as far as as far as teaming, you you pretty much they the, the fleet manager that you guys got right now. Is keeping you guys moving? So it, it was a rough start at first because we went through like three fleet managers, <laughs> and, you know, including the one that we got I now. I agree. The first one was complete garbage. Mm-hmm. Like, he just didn't communicate, didn't even know our names and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. It, it was just bad. And then he left, and we had another fleet manager, and she was okay. But, you know, I was we were still new, so we didn't really know, like, the potential we could really be making mm-hmm. until we got our fleet manager now. Because he lasted with us for, like, three months. I think the first fleet manager was, like, a month. The second one was, like, three months. And then we got the one we got now. And the one we have now, you know, he's been in the game for, like, 20 years, and he just knows how to run his board. And we made really good money. I mean, I think the highest, the highest gross check that I've made team in here was about 2600 and that was good, you know what I'm saying? That was a good, that was a good week. So like he keeps us rolling, he tries the best to keep us rolling, and you know I, I just can't complain for 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 me being my first year and me grossing the money that I made, like I, it just feels good. So you know, I if you can find that right compatible person, I say team in your first year. Right. I really do, because I mean, teaming has its pros and cons. Don't get me wrong, but I can go on about the cons about teaming, you know. But it, but there's definitely pros in it. So, but you gotta you find know, you, kind of you gotta find you gotta but. find that compatible person in order to do it. So U.S. is yes, man. you have to because you can't. Like honestly, mm-hmm. if if I didn't have the partner I had now, if he was the only son to say, you know what, I'm done. I'm, I found another company. I'm ready to leave. Blah blah blah. Go somewhere else. That's fine. You know, I'll pay. You know, respect that. Pay his wishes off. And, but I wouldn't team again. You know, I wouldn't team again because it's just it's hard to find that person you can pass compatible. Uh, exactly, it's like a marriage. <laughs> once y'all, once y'all, once oh, y'all separate, I, I, I was, once y'all, yeah, like once that. y'all separate, <laughs> once you separate, it's gonna be hard to find somebody else to be somebody else to to fill yeah. that void, man. <laughs> All right, so a year, yeah, so you're yeah, a year yeah. in with uh, U.S. Express, but you say here that you're you're currently looking for another company. What's uh what's the reason why you uh what what are some of the reasons why you want to back out of U.S. Express now? Well, I, I just know that once I got a year's experience, because I've been looking at other jobs, you know, like I said, I've been looking at your make the call videos and stuff, and I've been doing my own research as well. And a lot of these companies are paying really well, mm-hmm. but they just need that year experience, two years experience. So I just said, you know what? Let me just continue the team and get that experience out the way. Once I get that experience out the way, the sky's the limit, you know, to keep my NVR record clean and so that's that's mainly the main main reason why I'm looking at other companies now because I know the money's out there and I know there are companies that treat their drivers really well. Um, and U.S. Express is just it's a mega carry, so you know what you're gonna get out of American Carry. You know, some days it's good, some days it's rough. You know, so you know it is it is what it is. It's perks of being at a mega carry because you got so many options and stuff like that. But you know the pay could be a little bit better or it could be a little bit more consistent. Um, sometimes the miles fluctuate here, mm-hmm. um, you know, stuff like that. So miscommunication with, you know, my fleet manager and like overnight dispatch, and weekend dispatch. It's, it's just a lot of stuff that kind of frustrates. What have you? Know, so. so with U.S. Express, have you yeah, just, have you touched all forty eight yet, or what? What are the states that you touched so far? Almost, almost. I'm, I'm only missing four states. I'm missing South Dakota. Mm-hmm. I'm missing uh, Vermont. I'm missing Maine and Rhode Island. Those are the only states I haven't been to. 
What? And I guess the only reason why I ain't been to South Dakota is because I never took I ninety across. I always took ninety four mm-hmm. across to like North Dakota and stuff. But I, but that's probably why I've never been to South Dakota. But they don't really send us up to the Northeast for real, for real. I think the highest in the Northeast I've been was New Hampshire. So, um, but other than that, I haven't been to those. State, those other states that I say, but I've been everywhere else. Have you, have you ever been any, uh, have you ever been any, why you're teaming, you and your teammate, have you guys ever been anywhere that's, that could have been uh, inconspicuous, precarious, or anything like that, or any situations that you guys felt that wasn't, uh, that wasn't safe for you? I mean, no, not really. Um, not that I can think of. Um, I mean, I always tell people, like, with a team, and we rarely ever stop, you know, besides, like, on the 34 or something like that. We rarely ever stop. So, like, we're always moving. Like, every day I wake up, we're somewhat different. And um, so it's like we rarely ever stop. All right. So I don't really get a chance to, like, like you know, see what's going around in the area or whatever the case might be. Maybe when we get loaded or unloaded, but. Other than that, we're always moving. So, okay, cool. You know, awesome. I never came into that under that problem. Have you guys? Uh, have you guys came in any any situation? How 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 was it? How was it for you guys during the uh, during the three month pandemic shutdown? Oh man, shoot, couldn't have been better. Um, I, well, actually, no, I take that back. Um, it, it, as far as running is concerned, it could have been better because. We was getting so many loads because of, you know, all the stores need to be restocked and all that stuff. Like, and, you know, U.S. Express is a drive-in company. So we have multiple contracts with a lot of uh, uh, companies that um, hold goods for, like, those kind of stores that need to be restocked. So we, we was moving. Um, we was moving. And, you know, then then, there was, then they had the little, um, when they dropped the HOS, like the emergency load. Mm-hmm. I forgot what it's called, exempt load. So, you know, we were doing those, and, yeah, we was running real hard. Okay. So, yeah, it was real good during that time. But the only thing I can say is, and I'm going to go ahead and, and announce this publicly, that, um, you know, that uh, the COVID-19, the only, it was a problem for me in particular because I actually did catch the virus. I did get in contact with the virus. Oh, my God. And so um, I had to actually, yeah, I actually had to get off the truck for, and, you know, and they sent me home. In 14, in 14 my, days. I was feeling good. What what was uh what yeah, was some yeah, of the what, what was some good. of the uh what was what was some of the te- uh some of the tales what how did you know that you that you was feeling sick? Well, I did, well you know initially started off I thought I had a um thought I had a um what you call it um like a, like I thought I had the uh what do you call it allergy like I was sneezing and stuff. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it was around that time where, you know, allergy season was, you know, springtime was coming around. So I'm like, okay, well, you know, this is my little allergy medicine. I'll be fine. Right. And the next day, you know, I woke up with a sore throat and I was like, oh, man, I feel a cold coming. So I did my little remedy to so like, try to fight that because, you know, we're already going from state to state. Mm-hmm. We're in different climates. So I got all my stuff on the truck to keep my immune system boosted. Right. Third day, I felt like I woke up, I got hit by a brick wall. I was sweating. What? My throat was on fire, you know, it hurt to swallow, I had a fever. I was like, I told my partner, I said, I'm not driving. I feel like crap. And so he's like, for real? I was like, yeah, I, I don't feel good at all. So I called my fleet manager. He went through a little protocol because of my symptoms, you know, they got to go through. And he said, do you think you have it? And I'm like, I don't know, but I just don't feel good. So they sent me home. I went and home and got tested. A week later, I found out I tested positive. So. I had to stay home quarantine. They they put my partner off because he actually stayed on the road because he was feeling fine. But when I got the results back, they pulled him off the truck. Oh, okay. Kept him in the hotel. They like deep cleaned the truck and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, they they quarantined him. You know, what I'm saying? saying like so that. So how how long how long how yeah, how exactly. long was the quarantine and what were some of the medic medications that they put you on to so that you can eradicate it? They didn't give me they didn't give me no medications. They was, was like. There ain't not really much they can do. Just you just gotta stay quarantined. I, unless I got like I didn't so like my symptoms were bad, but they wasn't like because by the fifth day I pretty much fought it all because my immune system was pretty strong. I just some kind of way caught in contact with the virus. So like, but I still had to stay quarantined for fourteen days, even though I felt 
better after like the fifth day. I felt better. So, nah, I didn't take anything or nothing like that. I just did my normal stuff, just stayed to myself, stayed at home. And, you know, by the 14th day, I, you know, so I was able to get back on the so road. Being that, so, so uh, being that you stayed with your, that you stayed with your parents, uh, stayed with your moms and everything. So what you pretty much, how you, how you maintain that distance at home from your parents? So I utilize, we have a room um, at the apartment she stays at that, that, that has like a bathroom and stuff. I just stayed in that room and, you know, just stayed my distance. Okay, um, that's what's up. You know, there's a bathroom in there. I didn't really have to go out unless I, you know, wanted to get something to eat or something like that. But um, it's just, you know, just social distancing. That's how they keep saying. I hear that word so many times. Social distancing. So I just stayed to myself. That's did it. you? Did you? you know, I did everything else. Did, I just knew I wasn't going. Did you did you have any indication where right. did you come in contact with it at? I have no idea. Uh, I mean, you know, I have no idea. You got to think we go from state to state, city to city, and it could have been anywhere for all I know, you know. So it's just, but at the time, I know I didn't have the proper things that I needed. Like I didn't have a mask at the time. I didn't have gloves because it was, it was hard to get those stuff at Walmart. So... I didn't have those things. But when I was able to go home, I was able to order those things online and, you know, get the things I need. So when I got back on the truck, now I'm like, shit, I got my mask, got my gloves, got all my, you know, you know, I already had cleaning stuff on the truck, but now I'm like overstocked with it. I got you. So it's like, you know, I have the stuff to, you know, to stay safe. I just didn't have those things at first, but it was hard to come across, you know. And when it first started, because everybody, you know, when, when the store bought up, bought up everything. So. That's what's up, man. What I'm I'm glad that uh I'm glad that you're better out here. I'm glad that you're back out here on the road, man. I'm I'm glad that everything worked out for you, man. Make sure you definitely stay PPE up, man, because you know they, you know, even though they yeah. even though they opening everything up, man, it's it's still it's still coronavirus. <laughs> it's still. <laughs> It's still out yeah. here, you know. This shit yeah. is real. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Trust me, a know, lot, you know, know. They they just recently yeah, closed. Yeah, they shit. they they shut down the state. Of, what was that? California, I think. I'm not sure, but they they just shut it back down because they got some new cases. You know what I'm saying? Everybody out here, root. Yeah. I mean, I looting, rioting, and all like that. Right? They they root, uh, looting, rioting, mm-hmm. and all like that shit, and. And they still think that the Rona is not around. Guess who's bad, bitches? <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> Guess exactly. who's back? Exactly. Well, all right, brother, man. I, you know, yo, man, listen, you definitely, um, definitely, you know, talking to you was a was a joy, man. I really do appreciate it. Uh, you know, learning a little bit more about U.S. Express every damn day. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so <laughs> you, um, you and your teammate, uh, are are you guys are you guys planning on leaving at the same time, or you or you just in the process of getting yourself together? So it's funny because you know we make really good money out here, team and. You know, you know, I can call him my brother now. Like we're we're really close now. So, um, we we considered it. You know, the, uh, like teaming at another company. Mm-hmm. You know, but right now we're just kind of looking at our options. I, I've kind of gone back and forth the idea of going solo, and and then 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 we'll find a company that's paying really good in teams. We just both trying to get our gear out the way. So I, I just in his mind, and he got like a month or so to go. Oh, okay, uh, he's like a month behind me. But but yeah, we we've been. I think we've you know. We think we landed on a company that we might team with, but uh, we're going to see what happens. That's what's so, up. Yeah, maybe in a future interview. I don't well, know. Eric Washington. Well, wait a minute. Hold on. Eric Washington, thank you for coming on to the show, man. I really do appreciate <laughs> it. You know what I'm saying? Um, thank you for uh, sharing your experience with me out here. Definitely, uh, definitely make sure that you stay PPE'd up and stay safe out here, Max. Stay Corona safe out here. You know, I'm glad that uh, nothing serious uh, happened to you because, you know, a lot of people have perished uh, uh, on the virus and it was, you know, it's, it's not good, but mm-hmm. it's, it's good to hear, you know, good to hear a person of your stature coming up 
out of that situation and back out here trucking, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's a blessing. It really yes, is. it is. So I appreciate it. All right. Thank you very much. And if you guys want to come on and chop it up with me, you know how to do it. Just get at me at lockoutmenpodcast at gmail.com or head over to the uh, Instagram and hit me up over there in the DM. Or if you can find me on Facebook, if you can find me, hit me up in the messenger and then we'll chop it up that way. Yo, I am your humble host, Lockout Men, and this is Lockout Men Podcast. You guys like like it? You know what to do on that part, too. Like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell and that all button so you can receive the content that you'll never miss when I bring out a video. My cousin, hold on right quick. I got to pull him up. Got to pull him up. There we go. My cousin, DJ Wolf, he will go ahead and ride us out. Who is that DJ? And on that note, you guys take it easy, and I'll come back at you with another video. Peace.